Hello, my name is James Jennings, and I'm a professor of urban and environmental policy and planning at Tufts University in Medford, Massachusetts. I would first like to express my appreciation to the Immigrant Learning Center for sponsoring this event. The topic today is very important with many social, economic, and political implications. Let me first share what I believe is the significance of looking at relations between black or African Americans and immigrant groups. There are at least three dimensions associated with this topic and related questions. A demographic dimension, a historical dimension, and a political slash economic dimension. Demographically speaking, African Americans and immigrants will continue to grow in numbers in many places across the nation. Continuing immigration from countries like Mexico, but also throughout Latin America, Asia, and increasingly Africa, will be coupled with a relatively youthful and growing African American population. In these same cities, these two broad demographic groups will be living in the same neighborhoods and where the children from these groups are or will be attending the same schools. Another key demographic factor is the continual presence of immigration within the African American community. This is not a new development or social reality, but it is something that should be acknowledged and appreciated as we discuss this topic. In Boston, Massachusetts, where I work, for example, the American Community Survey reports that the foreign-born population within this city's black community is close to a quarter, or 24%. Thus, one out of every four blacks living in Boston is foreign-born. Along with the state of Massachusetts, New York and Florida also have relatively high proportions of foreign-born persons within the African-American or black community, ranging anywhere between one-fifth and more than one-quarter of all persons. Though these rates may be a relatively high figure compared to other cities and states, we will probably continue to see a strong presence of black immigrants in many traditional African-American communities. Of course, this demographic reality has enormous implications for discussing and assessing the state of relations between African-American and immigrant communities. It suggests much more complexity than how it, than how it has been typically treated in public discourse and even in some scholarly circles. An understanding of the historical dimension as my second dimension uh, related to this topic is crucial. This is a dimension that is invisible in discourse and debates and news reporting about relations between African Americans and immigrants. Yet, the history of black America is rich with the stories of immigrants. As examples of this claim, I could begin by citing the collaboration between representatives of the Haitian revolutionary Toussaint Louverture working with enslaved blacks circa early 1800s, planning to expand the successful Haitian slave rebellion into the U.S. South. In the 1920s and 1930s, West Indian immigrants joined African Americans in cities like New York, Boston, Philadelphia, and other places in enormous numbers. As a matter of fact, the influx of immigration into some cities was so huge that it spurred the publication of a book many decades ago titled, quote, The Negro Immigrant, 1899 to 1937, by sociologist Ira D. A. Reed in 1939. And please note the title, The Negro Immigrant, 1899 to 1937. If we fast forward, then we can find many other examples of leaders and activists from African American and various immigrant groups working together on a range of labor and economic initiatives. In 1993, the Asian American Federation in New York City spearheaded a major study authored by Grace Yoon documenting several African American and immigrant civic and community efforts aimed at improving local conditions for workers in New York and New Jersey. The study was titled, Intergroup Cooperation in Cities, 
African, Asian, and Hispanic communities. More recently, and using an Afro-Latino historical lens, Miriam Jimenez Roman and Juan Flores have captured important examples of both conflict and collaboration between African Americans and immigrants in their seminal work, The Afro-Latino Latina Reader. The historical dimension is key for building cooperation and collaboration versus a slipping into conflict and divisiveness. And the latter can be quite functional in the depressing of economic opportunities for everyone. In my opinion, the mainstream, the mainstream news media has been particularly lazy, I should say, about this matter by emphasizing conflict and presenting both groups as historically monolithic. The conflict that we have witnessed in some places cannot be minimized in terms of attention and redress. However, by overlooking or ignoring or just not being aware of the role and impact of immigration within the U.S. black community, it becomes easier for the media to fall into reporting sensationalized stories. In turn, this lack of comprehensive reporting, in some instances, feeds into potential animosity and mistrust between groups who actually have much in common. As I mentioned earlier, there's also a political dimension to this question. This dimension offers danger and opportunity. If political divisions mark relations between African American and immigrant communities, no matter how based on misperceptions, it will hurt both groups in terms of the expansion of economic opportunities for all. It will mean a competitive focus on jobs versus supporting strategies for the expansion of living wage jobs. It will mean that instead of economic partners, groups will see each other as potential economic losers or winners. It is important to note that the danger I am describing is sometimes functional, sadly, and actually fomented by some interest. In their book, A History of the Black Worker in the United States, Philip S. Foner and Lamar Robinson document numerous examples of how political conflict between African Americans and immigrants was easily encouraged by wealthier interests in order to keep profits up and wages down. How can we move from danger to opportunity? There are a number of actions that can be taken to encourage the leadership and representatives of African American and immigrant communities to keep open channels of communication and to consider collaboration and on behalf of expanding economic power and opportunities. I want to highlight briefly just one strategic response, and that is enhancing knowledge about the history and cultures of African Americans and immigrant communities. Public education about the history of racial and immigrant struggles for equality would make more visible the common struggles that bring people and groups together. Here in Massachusetts, coalitions comprising African Americans and immigrant groups have pushed for better working conditions, better access to health resources, and for better schools for everyone through various means, including public education. A few years ago, an organization known as the Network of African American and Immigrant Solidarity was founded and has been continuing this kind of work in bridge building. In a few minutes, you will hear from a representative of another organization doing similar work, the Black Alliance for Just Immigration. Along this line, the recent book by founder and president of the Immigrant Learning Center, Diane Portnoy, Immigrant Struggles, Immigrant Gifts, captures stories of struggles for a better life on the part of immigrant communities reflecting the racial and ethnic diversity of this nation. This could be coupled with the reading of any number of classic texts portraying the stories of African Americans struggling to build communities as both newcomers and older residents in the cities of, of this 
nation. One recent book that I would certainly recommend here is Jessica Gordon Nemhart's book titled Collective Courage, A History of African American Economic Thought and Practice. As I stated, I'm only suggesting one kind of strategy that can be considered to ensure that African American and immigrant communities continue to work to expand social justice and economic democracy in America for all people 